Hey hey, how's it going guys? My name is Ilwood and today we are taking a look at Nerim, a complete overhaul mod for the illustrious timeless classic Oblivion, which has just made an appearance on Steam, and to answer the ultimate question as always, is it worth your time? Also, I'm assuming you guys are at least aware of Oblivion and its general mechanics and concept before watching this review, because I will be making direct references and comparisons to the original game, especially when talking about gameplay. So, Nerim, like Oblivion, is a single player, fantasy, action adventure, open world RPG. Set in the magical world of Nerim, you'll be traversing the vast forests and desert areas of the land, exploring the many abandoned mines, labyrinths and crypts, all while utilising the new spells, level up and experience system this game has to offer. So, aesthetically, as this game is of course an overhaul mod of Oblivion, the game's visuals are pretty much identical, well, except for the various texture improvements, new, custom-made 3D objects, and the subtle alterations to the UI. Colours used retain that simple, vibrant feel that Oblivion is definitely known for, except with a lot of the underground areas having quite a darker colour palette, which is complemented well by the game's improved lighting. Lighting effects do seem a bit better over Oblivion. New effects like shadows, texture interactions, and character lighting all seem quite impressive additions that don't overpower the simple look of the game at all. So without a side-by-side -side comparison, you probably wouldn't even notice. But either way, still provide that cosy, simplistic feel just like Oblivion does. Other effects like spells, character glows, and environmental lighting seem pretty much the same with maybe few touch-ups for visual quality, but nothing too over the top, which I prefer. Textures and detail are quite identical at a glance to the original game, except with denser foliage, improved texture definitions, and considerably more ground clutter. These improved visuals do however take a noticeable toll on your graphic card though and will likely result in reduced frames on the higher settings even when considering the minimum and recommended hardware components of the device you are using. The UI is fine, pretty much an exact copy of the original with a few size differences and the addition of an experience bar. Other screens like inventory, skill, merchants and the quest log are much better with improvements to fluidity and quality of life which is always welcome. Level layouts like dungeons and caves are surprisingly similar to those in Oblivion. You have your typical main entrance, a couple of tight corridors and a few large areas with usually a second floor to explore, get to the end, kill a mini boss, find loot, then open a secret exit that links you back to the entrance, which I'm very happy they decided to maintain in Nerim. The overworld however is completely different due to the biomes being larger, altitude being harsher and points of interest being less obvious. This coupled with the insane amount of ground clutter added does make the overworld feel much busier than Oblivion, which personally I'm not a big fan. Of. Character and enemy designs aren't too different from the original game with your character having a few improvements to their movement animations, a few enemies having visual touch-ups and reskins, and all humanoid characters have been modified very little, except for facial designs and new race distinctions. The armour, weapons and quite a few spells however are all pretty much brand new and custom made specifically for Nerim with new and improved designs and textures except while also appealing to the minimalist theme of Oblivion's entirety, which I have to say I was very impressed impressed with. Overall, a decent visual overhaul that could do with a few optimizations when considering system performance. The OSTs in Nerim are not bad actually, fully orchestrated, often vocalised, bold, grand and varied soundtracks which I'm not being funny for a free to play mod are a lot better than I originally expected. The peaceful tracks when exploring the overworld, towns and cities provide a nice calming atmosphere that helps enhance the serenity of your surroundings well, which then gets completely flipped on its head when exploring the cold, dark underground areas of the world. The combat tracks are also very powerful with the vocals mentioned really showing through and completely completing the feeling of urgency in the moment. It is a shame however, as this is an Oblivion mod, you can't help but compare the OST quality between the two games constantly, which unfortunately Oblivion is far from the easiest contender when it comes to their raw soundtrack quality. But regardless, Nerim's tracks are okay and do manage to provide a pleasant gaming experience. Everything else sound related like spell sounds, weapon attacks and more seem to be ported directly from the original game for the most part, but I have no doubt include plenty of custom made sounds that I personally didn't really notice. All of the voice 
acting in the entire game has been completely remade from the ground up and is actually, to my surprise, in German. Now, being used to hundreds of hours of the original game and the fact I don't know a word of German, this did hinder my immersion considerably. The fact I'm not used to reading subtitles in an Oblivion game isn't exactly a pleasant experience, but it's not exactly the dev's fault that German is, I'm assuming, their first language, so cut them some slack. You will be fortunate to know though that the devs are currently working on an English dubbed version that will likely be released in the form of a DLC download on Steam. But who knows? Overall, a decent soundtrack quality that for a mod dev team has been executed surprisingly well. Now for the gameplay. So as per Oblivion, Nerim also doesn't technically have a selection of difficulties to choose from before you play. It does however have a difficulty slider bar in your settings screen which scales up enemy HP and damage the further right the bar is. Except like Oblivion, it provides no actual benefit whatsoever like skill gains or loot acquired. So if you think you're really good and want a serious challenge with nothing to show for it, chuck the difficulty up to max. I personally did this a few times in Oblivion back in the day, but specifically for Nerim, I kept it the default. You also need to create a custom character as you'd expect with three completely new races to choose from, each with their own unique looks and skill advantages which you'll need to decipher from the race's description. The lore of the game is obviously tied loosely to the character description. You play as a simple Abbey resident which has received an invitation to a meeting of gifted individuals to an old abandoned mine. You accept this unusual summoning only to find yourself stuck in some very suspicious circumstances which unfold slowly as you progress the game. Which I have to say it does seem like a low rich story from what little I saw of it. So when you first start the game you watch an informative intro cutscene that sets the scene for your starting location, you create your character, take control of it and play. The basic controls, attacks, spells and hotkey system are pretty much a copy and paste of Oblivion so from a controls perspective there's nothing additional you need to know. What makes Nerim unique over Oblivion though is its skill system. You now gain levels by killing enemies and gaining raw experience as opposed to sleeping in a bed after X amount of major just skill increases. All enemies and quests completed now give a set amount of XP with harder enemies, quests and bosses, obviously granting more XP than your standard ones. Every time you level you also gain a limited resource called learning points. These points are spent along with varied amounts of gold at NPCs around the world called skill teachers. These teachers can level a particular skill they teach between 1 to 5 points on average depending on the teacher and the base level of the skill you're trying to level. Definitely an unusual leveling system but as you can expect quite expensive. Other mechanics include a heavily downgraded fast travel system in the form of having to cast a specific teleportation spell for that exact location and consuming a teleportation rune which has a limited stock in shops and costs you gold. Why they would want to hinder the fast travel mechanics in an open world game I have no idea. The game also has new birth signs to choose from with a lot more impressive attachments like passives and usable spells, has much better purchasable spells to use over oblivion with much more reasonable mana costs and levels required than you would expect. Another quite useful mechanic is the diary in your inventory. When you gain enough XP to level up, you must do so by reading the diary and obviously selecting level up. It also keeps track of your hunting skills, special skills and spell levels. Hunting skills are particularly useful and are obtained via purchasable books from vendors that once read give your character specific unique passives like tooth extraction and fur collection. This is because at the start of the game, pretty much all non-humanoid enemies killed don't really drop anything, unless you have these specific passives which now allow them to drop the specified items, which I didn't really seem the point of in terms of enhancing your gaming experience. They have also implemented a few minor things like mining and actual blacksmithing which are a welcomed returning addition that wasn't introduced officially until Skyrim. The general concept of the game is also the same, you progress the story, do a few side quests following your red marker and explore and loot caves and crypts when you're bored. And trust me guys, this formula is far from broke. But one of Nerim's biggest flaws however is by far its red marker position. It's so bad in fact it's one of the main reasons why I didn't actually complete the game, which don't worry I'll elaborate on in a moment. I will say though that every random dungeon or mine is always a pleasure to explore, enemies are tough and there's always good loot at the end accompanied by a stronger version of that area's monster. If there's one thing that Nerim actually does better than Oblivion, it's the consistent rewarding loot from random endeavours. Combat in Nerim is also identical to Oblivion though, 
your standard skirmishes are dealt with as you would in Oblivion with mechanics like staggering enemies with your blocks, holding block to cast spells faster and sneak attacking with bows to be your bread and butter. The more useful spells though really shine through and enhance the general combat experience well. Enemies also react pretty much the same as Oblivion with smart positioning making you pretty much unhittable by a lot of the non-humanoid enemies which is also a welcomed return. Spellcasting enemies though are a higher threat overall since they also benefit from more combination spells than Oblivion and likely have more impressive buffs at the later levels too. I honestly didn't get to any actual boss fights during my few hours of playing which is very unfortunate but judging by the way the combat has been delivered I'm not going to doubt their quality. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? Its quality for a free to play mod is definitely worth mentioning. Its late game potential seems great, it does however have several hindrances to your gaming experience that are unfortunately unignorable. I'm going to give this game a NO CONTEST. The teleportation system is simply awful for an open world game as large as this. Even in the first 3 hours of gameplay, the game's inefficient visuals are quite strenuous on your graphics card even at some of the lower settings. The non-English voice acting definitely affects the immersion the game provides overall for me. The various leveling and skill systems are definitely not as good as they made them out to be and remove a bit of the simplicity of the oblivion system. The game often crashes when you wait a long time outdoors or manage to actually use a teleportation spell. The game in general is simply not as good as Oblivion and if anything made me create a new save in Oblivion because it made me miss the original game. But by far the worst part of Nerim which as soon as I noticed I knew I wouldn't even get halfway through the game is the red and green quest tracking icons. Now back in my prime Oblivion days I'm not gonna lie sometimes I would read the quest dialogue and quest descriptions if I was interested in a particular objective but a lot of the time I would just spam click through it and just run to the red marker on the map every time until the whole quest line was complete. Nerim's quest tracking icons are absent in about 30 to 60 percent of all quests I managed to actually get through, which a lot of the time forces you to read the quest description. Now some of you may be thinking that's not so bad is it? And you're right, it's not. But on two occasions it took me more than 20 minutes just to find the next person to talk to because there was no quest tracker to be seen and the quest description was way too vague and didn't indicate exactly where to go. Now for my regular viewers you probably guessed by now that time is one of the most important aspects I consider when making my reviews. My entire channel is based on saving you both time and money in general and if anyone thinks I'm spending any more than a minute on finding out where to turn in a fucking quest, they are having a fucking laugh. Not to mention the game's estimated 30 hours plus just to complete the main story. I really don't fancy adding more hours on top of that assuming where to go next in a quest. But who knows, all of the points mentioned can technically be fixed if they actually want to do it. So by the time some of you are watching this video in the future, the game may not be as bad as you think. But I'm here to rate exactly what we have, not its potential. So Nerim, unfortunately, doesn't come anywhere close to Oblivion's masterful beauty or simplistic quality. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I should be reviewing each week, and apologies for the varied frames throughout the video. I hope they haven't been too bad for you. I probably will eventually make an Oblivion review to link into this one for those unfortunate souls that have yet to play an Elder Scrolls game and are unfamiliar. When that may be, who knows. But anyways, as always, all the best guys, take care.